what a coach means and what someone who wants to lose weight means by a sustainable diet are often two different things. And I'm going to explain what those things are in a little more detail today. But the fundamental difference is this. Coaches want the results to be sustainable. People who want to lose weight want the process to be sustainable. And so it's really important that right from the start, we actually manage the expectation as to what the process looks like, what it should look like in order for you to get to and maintain a weight loss result that you are happy with. So here is man like Professor Clump and he wants to look like his hero, Kelly Robinson. Sick boxer, he thinks he's in great shape. He would love to get to boxer's physique shape. However, he wants the process to be sustainable. Massive red flag because as coaches know, fat loss is not sustainable, i.e. the process is not sustainable. It is a process. And right now, sustainable for Professor Clump is beer, booze, snacking on cookies, seemingly some kind of paella dish. And this is what he enjoys. He enjoys his lifestyle right now. That being said, this is his current reality. And because of his lifestyle and him enjoying it, he doesn't want to change too much. So for him, sustainable means still eating and drinking and enjoying all the stuff that he likes to enjoy. And maybe some exercise here and there just to offset those poor nutritional choices he's making on a daily basis that's keeping him overweight. Thing is, if he wants the whole process to be sustainable, with his current reality being pretty unsustainable from a fat loss perspective, this is not going to happen. Something has to change and it starts with a shift in mentality. So the first thing that Professor Clump needs to internalize is fat loss is a process. It's not a forever thing. You cannot stay in a calorie deficit forever, or ideally you shouldn't be in a calorie deficit forever. So that being said, we need to go through the actions that are going to be necessary during the fat loss process for Professor Clump to end up looking like Kelly Robinson. First thing he can do, which is going to be a very good idea, is to weigh himself. Weighing yourself daily is an exercise in data collection. It is not something to tie your emotions to psychologically. And actually doing so on a daily basis is going to be very helpful to divorce yourself from the number that you see on a scale all the time. Otherwise, if you keep putting it off until you think, oh, I had a good day yesterday, let's see how that shows up on the scale. It's not going to be a very useful tool to affect some kind of behavior change. If we want to affect some kind of behavior change, we need data, we need to analyze that data, and we need to react to the data. And if we're in a weight loss phase, we need to be looking at your weight. And so weighing yourself daily is going to be really important. It's also going to help you to just be aware of what you're doing and keep your weight slash health, if you are overweight, as something that you can continually be aware of. And it's an important health metric, especially when you are overweight. Having some kind of plan. Professor Clump has been winging it. He gets to a Tuesday lunch and he's thinking, oh, what do I fancy? Whereas Kelly Robinson, the man who he's trying to be, on a Tuesday, he knows what he's having for lunch. He knows what he's having for dinner. He knows on a Sunday what he's having for Thursday dinner because he's that organized. And so this is the level of organization that Professor Clump needs to be partaking in in order to get to his goals because you need to have a plan and you need to be able to execute that plan. And if you aren't planning, when obstacles arise, they're going to be the moments that will pull you off track. So it's important that we even plan for those obstacles that arise so that we know what to do. So having a plan from now on is going to be really important. Professor Clump needs a track. Now this is really off-putting for him because he's thinking, nah, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. I don't want to get on stage. Tracking is not just a tool used by bodybuilders. Tracking is two things. Firstly, it is a meal planning tool. If done correctly, you should be using MyFitnessPal as a planner rather than a tracker and committing to eating the calories and the food, etc., before you have to track it. That's the first thing. Secondly, if we are using it maybe at the start as purely a tracking tool just to see where you are getting most of your calories from, it's going to be a highly educational tool for you in order to actually see how many calories certain foods has, which you may not have realized before. For example, a lot of clients tell me they eat pretty healthy. Then they track a handful of nuts and realize that it was a good four to 500 calories. Whereas if they had an apple, it would have been 50. And so they are now educated by virtue of them tracking. So 
Professor Klump's gonna need to start tracking. Professor Klump is gonna need to start eating more protein than usual. If he's like most people who are overweight, who don't typically track their nutrition or take too much care with their nutrition, plan anything out, he's not eating anywhere near enough protein, which means that he may be losing muscle mass and he's not functioning as optimally as he could because he's not getting the amino acids in from pro protein that comprise enzymes, neurotransmitters, antibodies, hormones, all the things that make us feel good and perform well. Not only that, because he's gonna be getting into a calorie deficit, he is gonna be having to manage his hunger and eating more protein is a great way to do that. He's gonna to need to eat more fruit and veg. This is going to help ensure that he's getting lots of micronutrients in, which again are gonna help him to function effectively and feel good. And it's also going to help manage his hunger because he's gonna be getting a lot more fiber into his diet. And that's also gonna help with his digestion. He's gonna to have to start eating less carbs and fats than usual because he's probably eating a lot of those. That's where the bulk of his calories are coming from. And so he can't be having paella on a Thursday night anymore purely because he's gonna to have to plan and track for that and he realizes that actually it's got too many calories and those calories are coming mainly from carbs and fats. He's gonna to need to start drinking less alcohol. It doesn't help him to perform well, it has a lot of calories in there and it doesn't have enough nutrients in there. He's gonna to have to have less meals out. Remember, short-term thing, but it's important because a lot of his calories are coming from lots of meals out that he's not tracking at the moment and these meals out typically have a lot of butter, a lot of oils, lots of sauces, lots of salt. And these are all things that add a significant amount of calories to what he's eating. So he's gonna to have to have a much clearer picture on what he's eating, which means sadly for him at the moment, less meals out. He's also gonna to have to be walking around about 10K steps, purely because he is now going to be in a calorie deficit. Once you're in a calorie deficit, your metabolism starts to downregulate, so he needs to offset that with some activity. And an easy, quick win is going to be for him to get more steps in. And he's gonna do all of these things until he hits his target. He's gonna look like Kelly Robinson. And so this is the point where we make it sustainable. We go through a process called a reverse diet, whereby we essentially start to upregulate all of the things that we downregulated during the dieting phase. And we ensure that we are engaging in key habits and behaviors that we need to engage in, whether we're in a calorie deficit or not. The process of losing fat is not sustainable for the long term. It is just a phase. So guys, that was more of a high level overview of what a sustainable diet is from a coach's perspective, what the fat loss process looks like. And also it's important to manage expectations so that you know what a fat loss journey should look like. As a coach, we don't want you to get to a stage where you lose weight and then become a statistic because statistically a lot of people put the weight back on. We don't want that to happen. The reason why that does happen is typically because yes, they go through a fat loss phase, but it's not the fat loss phase that did it. It's the fact that they weren't coached after their diet how to maintain their weight, which is a very important part of the journey. It's all about really consolidating and ensuring that you actually change your lifestyle. I think this is where that idea comes from that people say they want a sustainable diet because they think that the diet itself by being unsustainable means that you cannot maintain your weight. But no, the diet was actually a necessary tool. There are obviously ways in which we can do that to make it as adherent as possible. So we don't want you to go on a crash diet, but we do want you to maintain your weight. And so please do understand that making the process of fat loss itself sustainable will probably backfire as it is not a sustainable process. But it does not end when you get to your target weight. That was just phase one. It's phase two where we actually make the result that you get sustainable. Hopefully that makes sense. In a future video, I'm going to be going through three different methods that we can implement that will help us to reverse out of our diet and ensure that we keep and maintain our results for good. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.